If you're interested in sales from Mark Rogers TV, please contact me at the information below. Now let's talk some college football and the plight of one Jeremy Johnson. Heisman candidate in August, backup quarterback in September. Gus Malzahn made the right move here. Jeremy Johnson has been deplorable in three games for the Auburn Tigers. Let's take it back to week one against Louisville. On the first drive of the game after Auburn gained possession on an interception, Jeremy Johnson threw two or three great passes, one a slant to Duke Williams to set up the Tigers at the two-yard line, and they ran it in from there. Since then, Jeremy Johnson has been mostly horrible against Louisville, which does not have an elite defense. Jacksonville State, an inferior opponent, and then against the LSU Tigers. Yes, a top-ranked defense, a very talented defense, but still Jeremy Johnson in completing 11 of 19 passes for 100 yards, two touchdowns, one pick. The stat line does not tell the story. He completed those passes, passed for that yardage, threw those touchdowns with a game out of reach in the second half when Auburn was basically trading points with LSU after trailing 24 to nothing. Johnson has looked lost. He has not been able to follow his progressions, has not made the right decisions, has not delivered the football crisply as we saw in uh, the spring game this past April, as we saw in the one start he had last season in replacing the suspended Nick Marshall that seems like forever ago. 12 of 16 against Arkansas in the 2014 opener. 245 yards passing, two touchdowns. Let the ball hit the ground four times against an Arkansas defense that proved later in the season to be one of the better units in the SEC. But Jeremy Johnson, based on that performance and based on what we've seen, based on the tangibles of the size and the arm strength and everything we've heard about his performance and scrimmages and practices, a Heisman candidate, especially considering the talent he has around him, mostly an experienced veteran offensive line, Peyton Barber and Rock Thomas, capable backs, Joe Von Robinson as well, Duke Williams, the number one target, along with Ricardo Lewis, veteran guys who have shown, and in Duke Williams' case, one of the elite you would think one of the elite wide receivers in college football who has not seen the football as nearly as much as he needs to see it. So he has the supporting cast. He has shown glimpses in the past on those brief moments when he has had center stage. The one game in the SEC, a couple mop-up appearances, and then when we've heard from camp and seen in spring ball. But it's been bad. Bad decisions, not delivering the football crisply, not on time. He has been lost. The body mannerisms have not exuded confidence or leadership at all from Jeremy Johnson. He made some disparaging post-game comments after the LSU game that further indicate that this kid does not have confidence right now. Enter Sean White who was the second-ranked quarterback, pocket-passing quarterback in the 2014 recruiting class coming out of high school, according to ESPNU, behind only Kyle Allen. And we know what Kyle Allen has accomplished a very, in, a, in a very brief period of time at Texas A&M. And White ranked ahead of the likes of Brad Kaya and Mason Rudolph, two of the fine young quarterbacks in college football at Miami and Oklahoma State. Sean White, if nothing else, even though he hasn't taken a snap at Auburn yet, is collecting MVPs just about every stop along the way between high school and college football. He was the MVP of the 2013 Elite 11 quarterback camp. He was the MVP of the Under Armour All-Star game as well uh, in 2014 prior to his freshman campaign. So he redshirted in 14 he took the field uh, for the first time that uh, the public got to see him, and Sean White played very well in the 2015 Auburn Spring game. Apparently, based on that performance, I watched the game. Many of you did as well. Sean White doesn't do anything particularly at an elite level, meaning uh, he doesn't have a just gigantic gun. He doesn't have just an enormous frame. 
He is not a dynamic playmaker with his feet. Okay, he can do all those things well. Based on what he's put on tape thus far, he can do all those things well. That uh, makes him the number two recruited pocket passer out of high school. Big arm. Again, not elite, elite, but good enough. Very crisp throwing motion. Looked very good in delivering the football in the spring game. Has prototypical college quarterback pocket passer size and is pretty nimble athletically with his feet. Can make some plays with his feet, and that's something that Jeremy Johnson didn't deliver either in replacing Nick Marshall. So Auburn doesn't lose anything there. I believe this is the right move as Auburn takes on a pretty good Mississippi State defense, which limited LSU to just 21 points in a loss in Starkville. So it's Auburn, it's Mississippi State, it's Sean White with a starting job. We'll see how long that lasts. It'll be interesting to see how he performs because he is even more so than Jeremy Johnson in game one against Louisville, an unproven commodity. Auburn fans, if you have any information, further information on Sean White, would love to hear it and your thoughts on the Johnson-White quarterback situation and Gus Malzahn's handling of the Auburn Tigers this season right here on Mark Rogers TV.